My name is Petra Lewis. I'm a professor of radiology at the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth College, and I'm also editor-in-chief for Case-Based Online Radiology Education, or CORE, which is one of the modules that's available from MidU. This video is to show you some examples of how the CORE cases can be used in a classroom flipping format. It contains six short clips from my fourth year uh, elective class at Geisel, which usually has four to eight students. And the pre-learning in each case is the linked core case that they are asked to complete before they come into the relevant workshop. As you can see, this is very much an active learning session which tests higher cognitive skills in the students. The core workshops can be obtained from the MedU site. Go to the Educator and Administrator section. Scroll down here to Blending MedU into Teaching and Learning and select the core classroom flipping workshops. And if you come down here you'll find a guide which will uh, give you some uh, examples of how you can incorporate them into your teaching and if you look down here for each of the cases we have so far developed you'll find them available in both a PowerPoint format a PDF format which if you're using an iPad is helpful as well as the speaker notes. These workshops were developed by the core editorial board and take one to one and a half hours to deploy depending on the workshop and with use all the content. There is one workshop per case, but they're designed so you can add or admit content as necessary. We provide extensive speaker notes and suggested questions and answers, and they're designed such that a senior resident or junior faculty person, even one from outside the subspecialty, can use them um, using the guidance we give them. And as you can see, they really test application, integration, and summation of the information within the core case. We're going to show you a series of video clips from uh, core workshop number two. And primarily, this is talking about um, solitary pulmonary nodules and atelectasis and the examples that we're showing you. As you will see during this series of short uh, video clips, there are six in all, that I am using an iPad in my teaching here. Uh, the reason I'm using an iPad is to provide a significant element of interactivity for the students and the instructor, enables them to very much focus on the area that we're talking about. And as you'll see, I have my iPad linked wirelessly to the podium computer such that both students and faculty can annotate the images during the teaching session. More detailed instructions on how to use iPads in teaching are available in the workshop guide on the Medi work on the Medi website. And we do provide the workshops in both PowerPoint and PDF format, which simplifies using them. Um, you certainly don't have to use an iPad to uh, provide interactive teaching with them. You can just do it in a straight PowerPoint format using the lecture notes. The software that most instructors use are either uh, apps called Two Screens or an app called SlideShark, available for um, the iPad and other tablets and a wireless link between the tablet and the podium computer can be done using an Apple TV connected to the computer or connected to the projector or air server or reflector apps. I do not have a financial interest in any of these um, software applications or hardware. I spent a few seconds on day one just showing the students how to use the basic tools within these apps and um, hand around a stylus at the time of the workshop and this works very well. In the first clip I am asking a, a very open-ended question of the students but this seems like a pretty simple question but in fact it's applying multiple concepts involving pathology, anatomy and x-ray imaging to this one case and this is clearly not a case where the student is directly just recalling information that they learned um, during the core case. There is nowhere in this case where these answers are listed and here the iPad's just being used to add, uh, note down the answers and also to then add a spontaneous diagram to um, illustrate a concept better. Apart from if some of these other factors come into play, what else might affect it? What we're talking about just now, Victor? The calcification. Right, so the presence of calcification, which is going to affect is what radiographic property? Uh, more calcification. Yeah, so it's going to make it denser. So how dense the nodule is. What else? What about obesity in that just the ability for the x-ray beam to... Yeah, so the patient's body habitus were absolutely affected. What about other pathologies? It's there 
obscuring it. Right, you got a big area of pneumonia, you could have a significant mass there or pleural effusions, a lot of pathology. Yeah. I guess the quality of the film. Absolutely. You know, you have a. So, what kind of studies might be missed on? Uh, it's like a poor inspiratory effort. Yeah. Or if it's, I guess, underdeveloped film. It's an underpenetrated film. Yeah, underpenetrated. yeah we don't develop them anymore. Portables. 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 Underpenetrated film. The lungs are going to look much whiter, right? An unpenetrated film. All of these facts. So you can see it's pretty complicated. So that's why there's no clear answer to what size can we see, because it might be an eight millimeter, or there are patients where a two centimeter one might easily be missed, or the patients where the mass. Remember, we were talking yesterday about that um, difficult area down in the medial costophrenic sulcus down here, but we might miss a five centimeter mass. I mean, you wouldn't think that we'd miss a five centimeter mass, but we can if it's in the wrong place. Or it's a portable chest x-ray on a supine patient on ICU. You can certainly miss a lot of these things. In this next clip, the student has been set a task where she has to identify areas on a chest x-ray where solitary pulmonary nodules are easily missed. Um, she's using the iPad to actively annotate the image, which is easier to follow than a laser pointer, um, and it maintains the focus of the other students rather than um, her just describing these areas. Uh, this particular task is helping her integrate both her knowledge of X-ray imaging, particularly of the chest X-ray, but also some technical factors, with her knowledge of anatomy. Again, this is not a recall task because although it includes elements from the uh, relevant core case as well as some anatomy teaching she'd done previously, um, she has to integrate a number of fairly complex concepts together. What about the lateral study? Can I still answer you? <laughs> <laughs> Just think how much you've got out of the way. I won't come back to you for a long time. Um, well, with the overlap of the diaphragms in the front, yeah. And again, it's a three. It's at three dimensions into two dimensions, right? So you've got lung here, right? It's coming all the way around. So all of this, yeah. Uh, and then up here, I mean, you really am secure. Oh yeah, yeah. tons of stuff over line. And then with the bones, there's a lot of spine that could hide. If they're not. Yeah, I got the, got the scapulae there as well. So that's all over line here. I mean, if you don't have the orthogonal to compare, I mean, anything behind the heart. Right. Yeah. So good. So there's a lot of places that we can miss stuff just because superimposed structures. In fact, you know, when you look at this diagram, there's all the small places we can miss it, and we're actually going to see the darn things. Um, so it's not surprising. So these are danger zones. These are the danger zones. And when they've looked at studies on what radiologists miss, um, this is where we tend to miss things that, you know, they've mapped out, sort of missed solitary pulmonary nodules, and they get missed here. On clip number three, the topic under the discussion is the different CT appearances of benign and malignant nodules, but I'm taking this opportunity to try and reinforce some of the anatomy that they have learned previously on a chest X-ray anatomy session and have them apply it to the CT scan. As you can see in this clip, although their first response is, I don't know, when they actually sit and think about it and think back to um, how they learned anatomy in a different radiological format, they can work this out. Is this above the aortic arch? Uh, no, it isn't. It's about the level of the carina. Mm, think of it like again. What have we got here? Yes. Trachea. Trachea, yeah. yeah. And then, what's the other? And what are these? Oh, it's esophagus. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm not going to guess the lobe. Yeah, you can. You know it. You know it. We did it. We did it the other day. So where did we say the lower lobes start? The Stop or start, depending on which way you're coming up or down. Was it the carina? Uh, what did we say? Uh, we said when we. You remember we were drawing out in the chest X-ray. Where did the lower lobes come up to? The level of the. the lower lobes came up pretty high. Yeah. Really high. The arch. The, the arch. arch. Yeah, they come up to the arch. So if you're above the arch, then you know it's going to be upper lobe. Right, and this has got to be above the arch because we've got great vessels there. All right, so we are in the upper lobe. Yeah, so you see, you do know. Right. 
In this next clip, a student has already, um, at, by this point, annotated the image, um, which is talking about basic concepts of volume loss and atelectasis in chest radiography. Again, while initially this seems a fairly simple task, it actually integrates knowledge of pathology, clinical findings, and radiology together. Are you going to see pleural movement when you have water as a cause of atelectasis? Yeah, you've got to have a pneumo. Okay. Yeah, if you've got a central obstructive mass, you're not going to see that pleural margin moving in. You might see this moving closer together, right? I mean, you know, remember how you don't... So one thing that's quite useful to think about, you know, you guys have learned physical exam. You know, you've learned the clinical exam, which, believe me, I used to be able to do, but I haven't done it for a very long time, of, you know, you put your hands on the patient, you get to take a deep inspiration, and you're tapping and everything else. Well, you know, all those clinical signs translate directly to radiological signs. So when you're not seeing the moves, the ribs moving apart so much because they've collapsed a lung, we see them. All right, so you may see the ribs closer together. All right, you've missed one big thing out on the head. Can move. Does anyone know? Well, I thought those were your. So you may see the fissures move if you're seeing them. What else? Some big pliable structures here. Didn't mention them briefly when we talk about our anatomy. Like the aortic line and the everything. Um, the aortic line will. It doesn't usually shift a whole lot. If you, you know, if you've got a pneumonectomy or something, you'll move that over. It's the hyla, all right. So the hyla will move. So the hyla can move up and down depending on what's involved. Now, how much things move is going to depend very much on how much lung is collapsed. On clip number five, we are further discussing atelectasis. In this case, right upper lobe atelectasis. At this point, we have already discussed the basic appearance of atelectasis and some dichromatic examples of right upper lobe atelectasis, and we're now looking at some specific patient cases. And the students are applying these, the concepts that they learnt um, both during the core case online and earlier in the session. So this provides elements of lower learning skills, such as repetition and recall, but it also provides higher level skills including the far transfer of knowledge, in other words, taking the very sim relatively simplistic, straightforward knowledge they have learned and applying it to more complex cases. And this is a very powerful learning tool. In this particular clip, both myself and the student are annotating the image. Here's another example. This is a younger patient who had um, some type of a viral respiratory infection. Um, so let's see what signs do we see here. Do we see that right paratracheal density? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not quite as tight as the other one, but pretty good. So this is the what? Minor fissure. Look at that hilum, right? Can you see? So um, did we get it? So can you draw the hilum for me? So it's a little bit up. It should always be low. It should never be the same height or height. Other signs of volume loss? Yeah, the diaphragm's definitely up. Sit back and look at it. Let's get a picture. What else? Um, so this is up the trachea. And in this final click, you again see how the student interacts with the iPad. In this case, they're exploring the appearance of left lower lobe atelectasis. Again, this involves a student applying the basic concepts they learned during the core case, as well as earlier in this particular session to a clinical case, as well as them integrating a concept that had been explored in an earlier core workshop, namely the silhouette sign that they'd previously learned in reference to pneumonia. You can kind of make a diaphragm actually better on your thing than up on the screen. Do you think there's a do you think there's a silhouette sign here? Yes. Oh well, not really. Okay, who votes for a silhouette sign? No, I, I don't think it's pretty clear. Well, the heart, the diaphragm. Oh, that's rub rub that out one sec, Kevin, so we can see underneath. Yeah. Can we see the left hemidiaphragm? No. No. All right. So, what do you think is going on? Oh. Uh, I like this is the, the left lower lung. Yeah, so this is left lower lobe atelectasis. This is by far the most common atelectasis. 
So in summary, I hope you um, enjoyed this demonstration of some active learning techniques involved um, in classroom flipping, the core medu cases uh, that enable you to be able to test students' higher cognitive skills and to be able to use iPad as a learning tool in an effective means. And if you visit the educator section of www.medu.org, you will find more uh, medical education resources relevant to classroom flipping, as well as the application of medu cases in other formats. Thank you for watching this video.